One of my old teachers used to say, never read a book you could have written. Never read a book you could write. It was his way of saying, if you could have written it, you already know this. Instead, stretch your mind, stretch your heart. Go to new places in your imagination. See life from a different point of view. Never read a book you could have written. I took that to heart. Even now, I really enjoy and appreciate the opportunities I get to read books that disagree with me and hang out with people who disagree with me as well. For example, as many of you know, last summer I had the opportunity to read five books by those who are currently and notoriously atheists, all of them trying to talk me out of my faith. Just this weekend, I had a powerful conversation with a young man who was quite anti-Catholic and an atheist himself. He made some powerful points that I've wrestled with in my mind since that conversation just two nights ago. Disagreeable? Indeed. Easy? Absolutely not. Disturbing to my already too rarely easy faith? Absolutely. Masochistic? <laughs> Perhaps. But because those words have stayed with me all these years, I still to this day look for articles and go to lectures that are critical of the God I believe in, the Jesus I love, the church I've given my life to, and the country I call home. College does that, I think, on its own. I suspect for all of us who did once and who are now doing college. Last semester, I was edified by a choice one of our seniors made. It was coming to the end, it was second semester, when a lot of seniors tend to want to party a little more than study. And he had a choice in setting up his curriculum between a very challenging course, a course he knew would challenge his way of thinking and would be a lot more work, or go with a course that he could ace quite easily that would be total gravy. He took the challenge. He took the course that was on anthropology and existentialism. He knew it would challenge him in many ways, and indeed it did. It challenged his faith, a lot of what he believed in, a lot of what he assumed to be true. After many long talks into the night later, and with more of his assumptions about God and how God works and what is true than he ever cared to take on in one semester, I can say right now that he's more alive and his faith is more real and it has grown tremendously from being stripped away from all the things that attaches to it when you grow up sometimes in a faith-filled home. Oh, it was the hard way for sure. A lot of anxiousness and yet way more honest. A fatah. Jesus says in this gospel story you just heard, when Jesus put his hand, his fingers into the ear of the deaf man, Ephata. It's one of two words that was carried into our day from the actual Aramaic because it meant so much to the early church. Ephata. It means be open. Be open-minded. This word carried a lot of weight. Because what Jesus kept coming up against was people who were not open-minded, who were anything but open-minded. A fata. In the context where the story falls, it's so clear. Be open-minded, he's saying. And you know what the opposite of open-minded is? Defensive. Getting defensive about what you assume to be true, 
about your church, your country, your God, anything. The opposite of open, of ephata, is defensive. A teacher like Jesus, a good new teacher of any sort in our lives, is not going to be immediately understood at all. This Jesus shook people up. He made them mad. We know that about him. He didn't tell them what they wanted to hear. Jesus didn't make it easy for them, ever. He still won't. He's not going to tell you what you want to hear. He's not going to tell you things that already affirm what you believe to be true. He's not. He's going to make you mad. Still does. And if you're not turning a deaf ear to him or to others in your life who disagree with you, there will be some cross that comes with listening not a small amount of suffering as you wrestle with this new insight, this new thought, this new worldview, this new paradigm that you're beginning to hear. It's challenging and difficult to get our souls and minds to wrap around something like that. Jesus was disagreeable, very disagreeable to them all. His perspective if we let ourselves see it, will always be costly to us. And we don't much like that, do we? There's something in us that doesn't like that sort of different perspective that costs us so much. This past week in our own nation, we saw this kind of squaring off happening again around our own president as he was trying to just address the children of the world, and pair of, the, of the country rather, and so many parents decided to keep, they're going to keep their kids out of school because they don't want them to hear our president because of some fear of indoctrination or subliminal messages that their kids might get in school. There's something about us that demonizes those we disagree with. And it doesn't become about an issue then, it becomes about the whole person. We demonize everything about them. They did that to Jesus, too, and it cost him his life. I received this email just this past week. I quote, People's reactions on the left and the right really trouble me. When they are wrapped around the truth, which is designed to stop all dialogue and conversation, I try to listen to many voices to increase my faith. I try not to get too angry if someone has a different perspective because I know if we continue to dialogue, we find more common ground than dissent. The dialogue stops with superficial slogans in place of substantive discussion. Any thoughts, Father Gary, on what we might do to help grow this country and this church of ours? End quote. What is becoming obvious is that we just hear what we want to hear. We just hear what we want to hear and nothing else. People only listen to stuff that already collaborates their hypothesis about life. They seek only evidence that supports what we already believe. Is this the life that's worthy of the one we call Master and Lord? Who hung out with the ones everybody else found disagreeable? who hung out with people who didn't just affirm him or just didn't agree with him, who weren't like him in every way and thought like he thought, but went out there with those who everybody else found disagreeable and who disagreed with him too? Is this the life that's worthy of the one we call Master and Lord? How far we are from the words of Pope Paul VI, who called for dialogue, dialogue, Dialogue with the other, with the other, the ones who are different from us as the way to the truth. We don't need to be afraid of the other, Pope Paul VI said. We don't need to be afraid of the other. 
we certainly don't need to demonize them. Anybody who disagrees with us. Not even a little. Over the years here at school, we're going to hear lots of disagreement. Professors, teachers, books that disagree with us that we'll find quite disagreeable that are going to make us lay awake sometimes at night wrestling with this new thought that's so disturbing. And those things are worth testing. We don't have to download that stuff too quickly. The Catholic Student Center is here at Washington University for you to be a resource for you in this conversation, in these dialogues. A place where you can test that new insight and wrestle it, wrestle with it and not be alone in that. Everything you hear won't be the truth. But there is a time-tested way of discerning the truth. There really is. This book is not a book I don't think any of us could have ever written. Even now. It's worth reading, therefore. But if you pick it up to read it just to confirm what you already believe, then you have desecrated this book. It should do to us to this day what it did, what Jesus did for those in his day. And challenge so many of our assumptions about God, about nation, about Jesus, about God's ways in this world, about who we are. So many. The wisdom of my old teacher stays with me. Never read a book you could have written. Perhaps his advice is more urgent than ever. <laughs>